We have created an environment of hate. And then we look at them like there's something wrong with them. First you hated black people, then you hated Jews. Now you're hating everybody. So the question is, when it's the only people left are you, will you hate yourself? Power concedes nothing. This house is for the people, by the people, to serve the people, and you won't listen. You go after everybody's kids but your own. You make hate. Speaking the truth there, Representative Pamela Stevenson in Kentucky, letting these hateful lawmakers know you know, who's the next target? We know now it's trans folks and they find anything they can to glom on to, to make sure they progress their hatred. But you know what, she put all these points together so well. Let's let her finish. You have to ask yourself the question, why would they be doing that? Who are we to cause that? None of us said we would come here and hurt people, and yet you make trades and policy so your bills can be heard. You go against the people of this state. This is a horrible, horrible session. This bill is horrible because it has nothing to do with the people. And the last thing I'll say is, God bless you, because somebody's going to have to atone. Yes, yes, the gentleman from Fetro. Somebody's going to have to atone for not being who you're supposed to be. We started with Jamal, Jamal Bowman yelling about what's going on with kids being murdered in schools and Republicans wanting nothing to do with it. And now we have uh, Representative Pamela here talking about how these attacks on trans folks have nothing to do with serving the people. It's these obvious things that sometimes have to be said. And yeah, they're still yelling because the it's so loud to hear all of this hatred going around. Sometimes you have to scream over the top of it. They didn't care though, as you saw, there was uh, activists there as well. It was in support of this particular representative fighting for their rights. But uh, they, of course, were ushered out as well. Let's watch more of that. Not strip parents of their rights and to not come after children. Stand up like that when trans kids are under attack. What do you do? Stand up like that when trans kids are under attack. This bill is called uh, SB 150 that they're pushing. Here's some of the consequences that come along with this that they think is just serving the people. In addition to banning puberty blockers, hormones and surgeries for kids under 18, Senate Bill 150 would also ban lessons. They'd ban lessons on gender identity and sexual orientation. They prevent trans students from using the bathroom that corresponds with their gender identity and also stop school districts from requiring teachers to use a student's pronouns if they don't align with their sex assigned at birth. So just from the top to the bottom, it goes from what they think they care about, which they, they're claiming they care about. All oh, these surgeries, kids are going to be so upset about everything that's happening and then they're mutilating children. But it always goes down to even uh, allowing teachers to disrespect folks. How does that connect to this? It's about the hate. There's more, because the bill has been called the most extreme and worst anti-LGBTQ piece of legislation in the country by pro-LGBTQ rights groups, including Human Rights Campaign and the ACLU of Kentucky and the Trevor Project. Uh, many of the same organizations were quick to praise uh, Bashir, who's the uh, governor there in Kentucky, tried to veto it, but of course there's too many Republicans there to do so. So Benny, uh, now we're talking about this and the fight continues somewhere else. This, this time in Kentucky. And there's this weird uh, uh, um, declaration that many of these folks make. We're looking to protect these children. But then we have people like uh, Michael Knowles who go to CPAC and say, we're looking to eradicate transgenderism. Is you're looking to protect kids? Because that's a fake, that's a lie. Or are you looking to eradicate these kids? It doesn't really matter, it depends on the audience, I guess. Yeah, no, seriously. Like, okay, so I think the most important thing to understand on this, first and foremost, is that all of this fundamentally is part of a larger, like, right-wing conspiracy theory that at its core is deeply anti-Semitic. Quite literally, this is the same exact lie that the Nazis used, like, back in the 1930s. Like, fundamentally, some of the first people that they targeted were people who were publicly queer, right? That is something, first and foremost, that's important to understand. Secondarily, like, 
these turfs, they're deeply unhinged. These bills are deeply unpopular, even in places like Kentucky, right? Even with some Republicans, they're deeply, deeply unpopular, right? And so it's important that if you're like an ally or something, you have a responsibility to make fun of these people and to make them ashamed to say the things that they do about queer folks and trans people in particular, right? Because once again, they are not popular. They are loud and they try to create the false sense of being popular, but they are not popular. They are deeply, deeply unpopular. And uh, my understanding is that actually the current governor, the Democratic governor of Kentucky, is in the position he is now because the Republican that was running against him literally could not stop talking about trans people. And the governor was like, what are you doing? This is ridiculous. You're literally bullying children. Because another thing that's important to understand is more so than anything else, bills like this are really pro-child abuse. Like fundamentally, the Republican Party, they keep trying to push these bills of like a parent's right to know, forcing the outing of you know queer youth to their parents. And you need to understand that that is an explicitly pro-child abuse position because fundamentally, if children felt safe in the home coming out to their parents, they would have already. Forcing an outing only changes things for the kids who don't have supportive parents. And then you get in the simple fact that queer children are far more likely to face child abuse and are far more likely to be kicked out of the home and literally be homeless because of unsupportive parents. And that is exactly who these Republicans are trying to empower, in addition to trying to empower bullying in schools. And the last thing I'll say mm -hmm. is the most important takeaway, which is really what are queer people fighting for when it comes to like trans youth? It's really this simple is that children should be allowed to go through whichever puberty they're the most comfortable with at the pu normal puberty age. That's it. That kids should just be able to go through at the normal puberty age, whichever puberty is the most comfortable with. That's it. That's and and that's and that's part of the hate. It's like we have to be inside and outside and circling your life because again of power. And by the way, I went Benny, I went down this uh, rabbit hole uh, maybe about a week ago. And I just sometimes I take deep dives on regular folks on Twitter who have 15 to 20 followers. And I went down this rabbit hole of multiple 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 stories from trans folks that uh talked about and putting up support things with like GoFundMe's and things like that. And the number one thing I kept seeing was homelessness. My parents hated me. My parents kicked me out. I thought I could trust them. And this is the spot I'm in. And there's a lot of retweeting of that and reposting of that and consistent help amongst the community to help each other. But how much do we actually pay attention to the real life things that are happening to folks? And say you do see someone young, 18 years old to 20, out on the streets, and then you wag your finger at them and go, look at that loser. Get a job, bum but you have no idea the kind of society that we've set up that would allow these folks who have been uh, brainwashed, let's keep it real, their parents, that once they hear from their child who they gave birth to, then want to flip and kick them out of the house over who they are, they're comfortable with it because there's enough people who are lying to them and telling them, this is what God wanted you to do. You're supposed to turn on your children. It happens a lot more than we're willing to say. And then in those situations, what I then also saw, as horrible as this is, is many folks saying, I just don't think I can be here. Yeah. Do and they really, care about kids? They like, and that's what's so sickening is they they want more violence against children. That's what these Republicans want. They want like they want young people to be in danger, right? And because actually I'm gonna tie this into something because this is actually really important, right? Like you remember it was a lieutenant governor, I think, of Tennessee that that was like uh, thirsting after like yes. femboys or something on uh, on, on Instagram, mm -hmm. right? A lot of people point that out and said that's hypocrisy. That's actually not hypocrisy. You see, he's being perfectly consistent in the fact that he thinks that queer people exist purely as a sexual interest for him and other privileged people. And the same thing fundamentally is true with trans people, right? More specifically, because fundamentally, these people want queer folks to be exploitable. That is above all else what they want, right? And it's so sickening and infuriating. It's why they like hypersexualize the existence of trans people, right? And it's why like so many queer folks literally get like forced into sex work because they'll get discriminated against anywhere else, right? specifically because of that like implication, right? Of, of the, the way our society has painted this picture of trans people as being like inherently sexual in some way. And it's so infuriating. It's so deeply, deeply infuriating because these Republicans know exactly what they're doing. 
They want queer folks to be in danger, right? They want queer folks to be in danger so that queer folks can be more easily exploited. And it's it's deeply, deeply sickening uh, to see. And like on top of that, there's just a layer of like, I mean, literally, like, <laughs> like, I don't know. It's just really, really infuriating because like trans folks in particular get so much nonsense from society, get discriminated against, are so often homeless and struggling. And fundamentally, I mean, there's this whole joke about like, you know, within the trans community, we're always like sharing the same five dollars with each other to keep each other alive. Mm. And uh, like the truth is, there's a lot of truth to that. And it's specifically because the way people like treat trans people more broadly. Um, And it is just, mm. yeah. Point is to make yeah. folks outcast to society. And one way that they do that is to demonize who they are. 